Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to talk about episode 12 from season three, The Departure, when John is feeling very restless and decides to take a job at the shipyards in Norfolk. This episode was directed by Ivan Dixon once again, and it was written by Joanna Lee, who wrote a number of episodes of The Waltons. Early in the episode, we have a scene around the dinner table. In this particular case, uh, John says, oh, it's Wednesday. We're having, uh, let's see, we're having corn chowder and apple fritters. And Olivia says, how, how did you guess? And he says, because we have that every Wednesday. It's the only time I ever remember that particular meal being something that we had on the Waltons, specifically said. Uh, but I did note that there were a number of dinner scenes in this episode. There was this one, and then a little later on, we're having, it looks like fried chicken and mashed potatoes with carrots and either peas or beans or something like that. And then a little later in the episode, we're having dinner once again. And this time I see once again that we have mashed potatoes and carrots. Uh, so what would happen on a day like this is that we would shoot all of those scenes back to back to back. So we may or may not shoot them in the sequence that they appeared in the episode, but good chance that we did. If there was no reason not to, then that would often happen, especially since pretty much everyone was in certainly the first scene, although then uh, John, Ralph Waite, was not in the next two because that was when he was supposed to be away working at the shipyards. Uh, so we would come in and that first dinner scene would be set up and there you go, we would be eating whatever that was and we would do the wide shots and we'd do all the close-ups and they'd keep resetting the food as needed and we would keep eating as needed and um, and then that scene would be finished and we'd all go and we'd change our clothes and they would reset the table for the next dinner scene. And that food would come in and we'd come back and we'd sit down and we'd shoot the wide shot of that and then the close-ups. And typically they didn't shoot each scene from the same first angle. Uh, they might move the camera a bit so that it was had a slightly different feel to it. Um, and how many close-ups and things like that would be dependent on who had things to say. If we didn't have much to say, then they might shoot like several of us in one shot. Or if someone really didn't have anything to say, then maybe they didn't have a close-up or weren't part of some additional shots beyond the big wide shot. Uh, so we would shoot the second one in whatever sequence that was, and then we would all go away and they would relight and set up for the next dinner scene. And we'd go change our clothes and we'd come back and there'd be a new dinner scene with new food. <laughs> And we'd sit down and we would rehearse it and then we would shoot the wide shot and then we would get into whatever close-ups there were for that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, those got to be long days with a lot of food and a lot of shots and um, a lot of takes of, of uh, food being passed around or eaten or plates being cleared or plates with uh, some half-eaten food on, things like that. So... Days in the kitchen were always felt long and um, kind of grueling. So uh, I just kept noting these dinner scenes. So it brought all of that back. A number of characters went through experiencing the need for some sort of a change. Mary Ellen certainly did any number of times. Like in the minstrel, when she ended up running away, uh, she just felt like she had to do something to change up her life. Olivia had that uh, a few times. Um, and in this case, it's John's turn. And he says that he's looking at getting a job in Norfolk because he feels that they need to make more money. He's tired of feeling like he's not, nothing's changing in his life. He's not making any forward progress. Everything's staying the same. Even Olivia brushes her hair the same way. He's just, he's looking for some adventure. Um, Olivia is very upset about the idea that he feels he needs to go away during the week. And there is reference made back to him doing that before in Waynesboro, which uh, was the town that John was working in in the homecoming when, of course, he's trying to get home for Christmas and we're not sure if he's going to make it. 
So I think we can all relate to having moments in our life when maybe we'd like something to be a little different. We feel like maybe we're in some sort of a rut and we're looking for some new inspiration in our life. Uh, so I think there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, and in this case, John decides it's going away and taking this job out of town. This shot with John and Olivia, the scene where they sit on the front porch and talk, um, looks to me like it was shot on the sound stage on the porch, the exterior front porch that was on the sound stage, uh, partially because of the way the interior, you can see the lighting into the living room, and also because you never see far enough to see off of the porch in any of the scene. And then a little later in the episode, Ben and Jason are sitting on the porch having a conversation. Um, and this is another case of they would have shot these scenes back to back because they were already on the porch. It was already basically lit for a night scene on the porch. So it just was very uh, time efficient to just you know, then shoot to the next one rather than moving all of the equipment someplace else and then another time having to come back and set it all up again. So that was why we shot out of order. It just made things move faster and it was really just up to the actors. They were the ones who had to deal with things jumping around and where were you in the story, but that was far less of an issue than moving all of that equipment and the time involved with that. I've been asked about phone calls, phone call scenes, and I'm gonna speak a little bit more about that later, but uh, in this case, there's a point where Olivia goes to Ike's store to call John. And in this case, you see both Olivia on the phone and then you see John at the boarding house where he's staying at. So those would have been shot at different times uh, when Michael was at Ike's store on the phone. Uh, chances are because the other half of the conversation was actually scripted. Uh, Somebody, it may not have been Ralph if he wasn't available, it might have been, but somebody, perhaps a script supervisor, would have read those lines of, of John's so that when Michael was on the phone, she could actually hear the other dialogue. That will often happen when it's an inner cut of shots like that. And then at another point when they were shooting all of the things inside the boarding house where John was staying, they would have shot Ralph's side of that phone conversation. And perhaps if Michael was working that day, she might have read those lines off camera. Otherwise, again, very well could have been the script supervisor just reading those lines for Ralph to hear the other side of the conversation. Most of the time with phone calls, there is nobody there and we just take pauses and imagine what's being said to us on the other side and it's shot like that. Cute little side things that I noticed. Elizabeth has a bunny named Cindy. Uh, I don't remember the bunny being around any more than in this episode. So there was a one-off on the bunny. Um, I also enjoy, uh, there's a, a subplot with grandpa has a sore tooth. He keeps saying it's galloping rheumatism because he doesn't want to go to the dentist. So he likes to pretend it's going to go away. Grandma finally makes him an appointment with the dentist and uh, she arranges for them to go in. And in this case, you see Grandpa riding in the rumble seat of John Boy's car, uh, which I don't remember another time seeing Will in that rumble seat. So that was a little bit of a one-off as well. Another unusual aspect of this episode was John getting in a fight in a bar and he has John Boy with him and, <laughs> and you suddenly see his bar fight. And I thought John... Ralph did a terrific job of appearing to take some punches there. Uh, and those would have been choreographed. There would have been, um, you know, somebody, some sort of stunt coordinator to do that. And it would have been all staged to make sure that nobody actually was hit. Um, I think it's cute that uh, then when they, when John and John Boy get out of there and they're out on the street and, and, and they're rehashing this fight and, and John Boy's talking about somebody coming after him with a chair. And John's like, what did you do? He said, I ducked behind a table. What do you think I did? So I think it was cute that they weren't both particularly gung-ho to be involved in this, in this fight. And then, of course, John says, let's go home. He's had enough of his adventure. He's had enough of being away from the family. And they go home. So again, another case of like in the homecoming, when John had to go away to work, 
and he doesn't like being away from the family and he comes home and he figures out how to make a living staying at home. And that's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the season three, episode 12, The Departure. Um, I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.